So, I'm starting with things that I can build in my garage because uh, we don't take possession of the cabin until the start of the winter. Uh, date's been moved forward to the 21st of December, which is uh, which is great. Merry Christmas to us. Um, not so much work I can do there though. Uh, it's higher elevation. It's um, a little further up north. Uh, there's already snow on the ground here, and I don't anticipate that uh, there'll be anything really ready to build up there until late March, early April at the, at the earliest. So we're going to get a sea can up there. Um, I'm going to establish a workshop and um, hopefully between now and then be able to prefab a bunch of things in the garage uh, and take them up on uh, in the truck and on the trailer and um, assemble them what I've, uh, I've been able to prefab in the garage. So all this is starting with um, a cabinet that I'm, I've designed based on previous experiences with building speakers many years ago. Again, forget the drawing. What it looks like is something like this. You can imagine it on the inside. Describe, well, what you see here is one chamber, two chamber, three chambers, three separate chambers. Inside the central chamber is where the generator set is going to reside. So that's what this pink thing is. That's the generator. This cabinet be roughly four feet by three feet. It's going to have two ported four inch ducts, each with a fan ported to the outside, accepting outside air. Going to have a space in this wall that's cut out. We're going to have another space in this wall that is also cut out. And two ports venting to the exterior. So the reason for this is that I want the nice cool air from the outside to be vented inward at the bottom of the generator, passing through the generator and out the top of the other side. And it will all exit out. Now, you might be wondering, what about the exhaust? It's a great question. On my gen set, the exhaust is down about here. I'm planning, this is getting a little messy, planning on venting it out to the exterior on its own. By welding or somehow fastening a piece of pipe directly to it, uh, obviously with a little gasket and uh, inventing it directly outside. So all that airflow is meant only for uh, heat reduction. At the front of this chamber, I plan on having a door that sort of swings open so you can access the generator set and um, the wires coming out of it would be um, likely somewhere up here. That would be 240 volts AC. Uh, that would be the um, module, the sort of uh, remote turn on module. Um, also want a 120 volts AC. I want to take it and run it, uh, bury the wire and run it across to the workshop. This is, uh, this is the gist of it. And the reason for these multiple chambers and the way that I've done it is that 
um, the acoustics of it. So I want the acoustics bouncing around in here and you know there's uh, the more that um, we can uh, have sound waves bouncing around the inside of the cabinet as opposed to bouncing outside of the cabinet um, is that it will slowly diminish. Um, there's two uh, acoustic uh, properties here that I'm taking advantage of. Um, the first is damping, so I'm using MDF. Um, it's uh, most speakers are actually made from MDF. It's a medium density fiber board, and there's um, considerable damping properties in it. Uh, so, um, for example, um, if I were to take this and you know we've got you can hear the ring of that. It's like taking a wine glass or something. This is damping. See what happens. That's pretty much what we're going to be doing. And I'll be adding some uh, sound deadening material to the MDF. Um, additionally, the other property we'll take advantage of is absorption. So I'm going to line the interior of the box with a sonal pan or um, some other sort of uh, inexpensive sound deadening material. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit experimental. I haven't, um, there's, there's really not any plans available online. There's a few videos on YouTube of uh, people converting little garden sheds and that sort of thing to, um, uh, you know, to uh, a generator cabinet, but uh, there's no science to it. And um, I have a thermostat that I plan to be using uh, to monitor the heat on the inside because I'm wondering if this is too small. Um, you know, it's a rather large generator and they do generate a lot of heat. Um, you know, it's, if that's the case, I might have to increase the size of the fans, put uh, something really large on. But we'll see whether that happens or not. Stay tuned. So this is the Westinghouse WGen 7500 dual fuel. It's a pretty awesome unit. Uh, dual fuel because you can fill it with gas and run it. Or you can flip a switch here and run it with a standard barbecue tank. So this unit is going to be the backbone of our power system uh, in situations where there's not a whole lot of sun and uh, there's a lot of demand on the solar system, uh, this will automatically kick on with the, what I'm designing and it'll charge the battery back. That's the plan. So a little tour around the unit. It comes with a fob, you can start it remotely, which means that it has an electronic choke, which is absolutely a must if you want to uh, have an automatic start to power up uh, the solar system. Um, standard 240 volt jack, uh, that's what we'll be using to uh, go all the way back to the panel in the cabin and um, a couple of these for some what I'm going to call local power in the, uh, in, in the power shed. Um, battery to start things up, of course the LP fitting. So currently the muffler's off because I'm going to figure out how to modify it slightly. Uh, this is going to be very near the wall of the power shed. And that mounts somewhere like that. So we're going to have some copper pipe coming out to vent things to the exterior because we don't want the buildup of carbon monoxide through the exhaust. It's not the prettiest solder, but it should work. It should probably be stated that doing something like this to your generator likely voids the warranty. <sighs> and it should also be mentioned that you gotta torque the crap out of your bolts. <laughs> Put parts back on because there's an awful lot of vibration. So the soldering was a big old fail. Um, turned the generator on and uh, 
maybe two minutes in, boop, it just spat out the copper pipe. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually still laughing about it. Clearly, I didn't give that very much thought. Uh, solder melts at, um, oh geez, three, 250, 300 Fahrenheit. Um, <laughs> The generator's exhaust is probably around 400, 450, so not very smart. Anyhow, I uh, will hit the drawing board. Um, probably going to use a piece of uh, gas pipe and some high temperature gasket. Something like this, and something like this. This because. I can fasten this end to the muffler. I can simply screw this on. Uh, that was the other uh, sort of fail of that other design, having that copper pipe stick out. Uh, not really conducive to rolling that generator in and out of its cabinet. So we'll see whether this works.